Hi, my name is Cindy, and the name of my shop is Molasses Creek Woodcraft. You are you, and you are exactly who you should be. Thank you for joining me. We have a special video coming for you today. This video is done in association with my friend James over at King's Fine Woodworking. This is going to be an unboxing and assembly video of his new flagship table saw sled. About a month ago, he put out two videos and began selling this table saw sled. You can find those videos on his YouTube channel, King's Fine Woodworking. And if you wish to purchase this table saw sled, you can find it on his website, kingsfinewoodworking.com. I have no official affiliation with King's Fine Woodworking other than being one of the people who helped him moderate his Facebook group. When he began selling this table saw sled, we started getting a lot of questions about what exactly you would get if you purchased it and what you would need to do to assemble it in your shop. So that's where the idea for this video came about. If you purchase this table saw sled, it gets shipped out like this. The box is about four inches deep, 18 and a half inches wide and 32 inches long. And it weighs 27.6 pounds on my bathroom scale. So pull up a chair, grab a cup of coffee or your favorite beverage because I'm not going to lie, it's a little chilly in here this morning, and let's see what's inside this box. This is just an overview of everything that came in the box with everything spread out on a moving blanket on the floor of my shop. I will take a few minutes to go through everything individually just as a reference for anyone who might want to see what all the pieces look like close up. I realize this is not the most riveting piece of video so feel free to skip over this and fast forward up to about the five and a half minute mark where the assembly begins. I just wanted to show the packing material this came with, this shredded cardboard, which I thought was a really nice touch. There's no styrofoam to throw out. One piece marked sled base bottom inside boards. Two pieces marked sled base upper outside boards. Two pieces mark sled base upper inside boards. Two pieces mark sled base bottom outside runner. Two pieces that are the zero clearance insert boards for the sled base and they come with the ruler for the back fence. One piece back fence rearmost board and the back fence adjustable section front and back boards. One piece marked front fence. One piece marked miter function mounting board. One piece that's the picture frame triangle and it comes with the pre-drilled ruler. Four pieces marked safety box with the acrylic top for the safety box. Two pieces marked miter function miter blade. Two zero clearance inserts for the back fence, picture frame stop block, and two miter bars. One stop block and one digital angle finder with an instruction manual. 
Now I've put all the hardware and some magnetic parts trays. And there's the large hardware, the knobs and the toggle clamp and the hold down clamp. And finally a very nice set of colored plants. Okay, I'm just going to begin by assembling the safety box. I'm going to start putting some glue around the edges. And I'm going to jump forward to actually getting everything glued together, wiping off some of the excess glue. And I'm going to grab the acrylic lid and awkwardly peel off one of the sides of the acrylic lid. Now using some thick CA glue, I'm going to just spread a bead of CA glue around the whole edge of the top. I'm not going to use any activator. I'm just going to press the acrylic top in place. And then I'm going to grab some blue painter's tape and just tape the dickens out of this thing. And when I get it all taped up, I'll set it aside to dry because I'm not going to need it again for quite a while. So I'm going to start to get ready to assemble the sled base. So I've got two straight edges, a long level and a short level and a carpenter's square. I clamped everything down, making sure those two levels were square to each other. And I'm going to start gluing together the pieces for the sled base. Now this is real important, working from my left to my right. First, I'm putting glue on a sled base bottom outside runner. And I'm putting glue just on the edge of the sled base bottom, just on the edge up against the T-track. Then I'm putting glue on the edges of a sled base bottom outside board. I'm going to put that board on top of the sled base bottom outside runner and slide the sled base bottom underneath it. Make sure I'm getting that pressed up against the T-track and keeping everything square. And we're just kind of going to do a mirror image of that on the other side. I'm putting glue on the sled base bottom up against where the T-track is. And I'm putting glue on the other sled base bottom outside runner. And then I'm going to put glue on the edges 
of the sled base bottom outside board. And I'm going to put it up against the sled base bottom, pressing it up against the chi track and slip that outside runner underneath it. And using a straight edge, make sure I get that slid in perfectly parallel with the edge and keeping everything square. And there are the two sled base upper inside Keep glue those down, keeping them up against the inside of the T-tracks. And you need to add weight. And I have these water jugs that I use to carry water with me when I go camping. And they're pretty heavy when they're filled up, so I'm going to use those for my gravity clamps. And this is what it all looks like when it's glued up. Uh, James already does a really good job of explaining how to adjust the miter bars in your miter slots. This is a really good time to do that. And now we can sand everything. Just sand all of the plywood pieces to smooth them out, round over the edges a little bit, remove the red or green stamping on the pieces. I didn't show all of the sanding. The sled base bottom is set by this time so you can sand it also and then waxing apply a coat of wax to the entire bottom of the sled base and you can flip the sled base back over and add the zero clearance inserts. And now you can install the front fence. And then you can flip that back over and helping to secure it with some clamps. You can attach temporary screws to the bottom of the front fence. These are to hold it more securely while you're doing your five cut method. Now you can mark and measure where the back fence goes and make sure you have the bevel side down. Both pieces are beveled and measure it so it will be centered on the sled base, making a pencil mark where the edges of the fence go. Now with the back fence clamped down securely, you're going to add two screws to the bottom of the back fence. Only two screws, one on the right side and one on the left side. And make sure you don't screw into the adjustable fence. Okay, now set your table saw fence at 15 and 7 8 inches and use CA glue to glue the miter bars to the bottom of the base. Now, I used way, way, way too much CA glue there. You really only need a couple of dots. It helps to have someone to help you. 
keep the base pressed up against the fence. Bring it down over those miter bars. And then grab your water jug gravity clamps and set them on there for a few minutes until that CA glue dries. And I forgot to mention here to use washers or coins or something to lift up the miter bars. After the CA glue is set, you can turn that upside down. Use a self-centering bit to screw in the miter bars. And I'm just using a chisel to remove some of the CA glue squeeze out. Because like I said, I used way too much CA glue. And now is an exciting time. It's time to make the first cut. Hi there, good folks in YouTube land. I want to take a few minutes to explain the technical difficulty I had when I was filming this video. The last thing you saw me do was make the first cut through my table saw sled. Now you noticed I didn't have the blade set very high on my table saw. So when I went to raise the blade on my table saw, I discovered I could neither raise nor lower the blade on my table saw. I remembered when I turned on the table saw, I heard a weird clanking noise coming from my dust collector. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird. I've never heard that kind of noise coming from my dust collector before. So I enlisted the help of my entire family and we found some parts from my table saw motor laying inside the dust collector bag for my dust collector. Now we tried to figure out where those parts came from, and we all kind of concluded, well, crap, this is going to be expensive. And it was. And that's why you now see this new saw stop table saw sitting in front of me. Now, I'm not sponsored by anyone. I paid for this saw myself. I would like to give a shout out to the good folks at the Rockler in Tuckwilla, Washington for setting me up with everything I needed for this table saw, helping me load it up in a torrential downpour in one of these atmospheric rivers we tend to get in Seattle this time of year. It's unfortunate that I lost my grizzly table saw and I now need to figure out if I can fix it, but it's fortunate because now I get to show you how to set up your table saw sled on a new table saw, should you happen to get a new table saw. Now the first thing I want to point out is when I glued these miter bars onto the bottom of the table saw sled, I used way too much CA glue. You don't need that much CA glue. You really only need a few dots, and that'll hold it until you get the screws put in the bottom of the table saw sled. Now, I could have reused these miter bars. They popped off the bottom of the table saw sled really easily. The only reason I couldn't reuse them is because I used so much CA glue, I got glue into these little channels where the set screws go, and I can't get these set screws out. So, another trip down to my Rockler store. It's a good thing I only live about five or six miles away from them. And I got a couple of new miter bars for the table saw sled. So we can finish the video, finish the assembly of the table saw sled with the new table saw and the new miter bars. So let's get to that. Thank you.
I'm ready to glue my new miter bars onto the bottom of the table saw sled. I've already adjusted the miter bars so they don't have any wiggle. I'm measuring them so they're equal distance from the front of the table saw base. Now this time you'll notice I'm not spreading CA glue all over the place. I'm just putting a couple of dots down on each of the miter bars. I have my fence set at 15 and 7 eighths inches again, but this time I have to drop it down over the saw blade because I've already made the first cut through it. I need to make sure I get the curve of that first cut over this new saw blade. So I drop it down, put my gravity clamps on it, and let it sit for a few minutes until that CA glue is dried. And of course, remember to lift the miter bars up with washers or coins. And when the CA glue is dried, you can screw in the miter bars to the bottom of the table saw fence. And I'm going to put another coat of wax all over the bottom of the table saw sled. And I'm going to make another first cut through the table saw sled, which I guess would be technically my second first cut. So now I have a square piece of plywood cut and I'm going to do the five cut method. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about how to do the five cut method. James already explains it very well in his video and there are a lot of other videos out there on YouTube how, explaining how to do the five cut method. I should have moved those zero clearance inserts over. I forgot to do that and I've got my little cut off pieces falling into the track there so when you do this remember to move those zero clearance inserts over I'm going to show you the math that I did for my first five cut method. You don't have to be a math genius to do this. Anybody can do this. Now, I came up with an error per inch of 0.0026 and it's telling me I need to move my fence back 0.0591 inches. I have my feeler gauge out now uh, set at 0 0.06 inches and I'm doing the second set of math now for my second five cut method and I actually wrote this down wrong it's actually 0 0.0005 and then it's telling me I would need to move the fence 0 0.01 inches. So those measurements are plenty good enough for me. So I'm going to put the permanent screws in the bottom of the back fence.
and I'm going to remove the temporary screws that I put in the bottom of the front vents. Now it's time to install the safety box. I did this a little differently than the way James did it. I wanted to make it removable. So rather than gluing it, I marked where I wanted to drill four holes directly above and below the T-nuts. I clamped the safety box on and drilled the four holes and put it on with screws. Then I reinstalled the zero clearance inserts. To install the measuring tape, I marked where the edge of the kerf was for my saw blade and used that for the zero on the measuring tape. And then I just peeled the backing off the measuring tape, stuck the zero down where I had made my pencil mark, Pushed it down. And then just trimmed off the excess. Then you just put on your stop lock. And with that, your table saw sled is done. Okay, I want to conclude this video with a little tip. You may have noticed the screwdriver I was using there at the end to adjust the zero clearance inserts. Well, the screws in the bottom use a 532nd inch hex, and the screws in the back fence use a Phillips. And I know I'm too lazy to go find two tools when I want to adjust the inserts. So, go to Harbor Freight, go to your local pawn shop, raid your neighbor's garage when he's not looking, find a Phillips screwdriver that has a handle you can drill into, and a 532nd inch hex wrench, and just drill a hole in the handle and glue in the hex wrench. This way you only have one zero clearance insert tool to worry about. I will be back with a part two video that covers the assembly of the picture frame jig and the miter function jig. I will add a link in the comments to James videos on his channel and as always, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time. And remember, measure twice, cut once, you can never have enough clamps, and please keep your fingers attached to your body.